What I'd like to do in this sermon, Ed, is consider the part that time and chance play in the affairs of men. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, so I presume these are words from Solomon. I returned, he says, and saw under the sun. The race is not always, it doesn't put always in there, but, but that's implied. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not always to the swift. Nor the battle always to the strong. And if you think about in the times of maybe uh, these things were being written, there would be perhaps uh, wrestling competitions going on. So the strongest person didn't necessarily always win. And that's what's being inferred here. Just because you had the, 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 the maximum talent doesn't mean that something else doesn't enter into the equation and uh, cause a different result. So the, I saw under the sun, I mean, that, that's pretty much universal is what he's saying. Anywhere the sun shines, this can happen. The race is not necessarily to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. So we're talking here in terms of athletic things that happen in, in uh, the lives of young people. Neither yet bread to the wise, at least not under the sun, not always bread necessarily to the wise. And you think if uh, somebody's wise, they're probably going to accumulate a little more than uh, those who are not nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But here's what enters in. Time and chance happens to them all. So that's expressed in terms that are familiar to athletes. Goals being short and uh, sought, whether in races, in wrestling, uh, in acquiring food and favor, or the other things that are mentioned there. Diligence matters. Diligence matters. Second Corinthians chapter nine and verse twenty-four. Don't you know? 2 Corinthians 9, verse 24, that they which run in a race, they all run. I remember I ran in a marathon uh, back in 1979 in Montreal, Canada. The two of the closest, uh, Dick and Scott and myself and Bryant, Bryant wasn't running in the race, he was, in, he was uh, my traveling aid station, at least in the first one that we went to. The second one, about halfway through the race, I, uh, I had been in an automobile accident a couple of weeks before that and hadn't trained. So when we got about halfway through the race, my tongue was dragging the ground. And uh, I called Brad over. He had his bicycle following along. I don't know if you had the bicycle on that. No, didn't have the bicycle. Had the bicycle on the first marathon, and he was my traveling aid station. But on the second, uh, <clears throat> on the second uh, time in Montreal, which uh, was, I think, about 1983, he went along, and uh, so here at the halfway point, I was completely out of it because I hadn't been able to train for three weeks. He just came up, I took my number off, and pinned it on him, and he took off running for the finish line. 
<laughs> and uh, he got his picture taken with my name on it. <laughs> and um, when he came, when he came thundering down, he'd only run now like 13 miles. Uh, the race is 26 miles. And so when he comes rundering, run, uh, thundering down to the finish line, the whole crowd couldn't believe that he was running that fast at that point at the race, but they didn't know that I had, give, I had run the first half. <laughs> and, the, and apparently the whole crowd gave him a thundering ovation. <clears throat> Diligence matters, and Bryant was very diligent as a runner. Don't you know that they which run in a race all run, but there's only, as they were looking at it in those days, there's only one first place finisher. So you run that you may obtain, and you do those things. Let your garments, it says, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 8, let your garments be always white and let your head lack no ointment. Do everything you can, in other words, so that you can uh, be a winner. Verse 9 of chapter 9, live joyfully <clears throat> with a wife whom you lovest, and uh, for the most part, we've done that. All the days of your life, of your vanity, which he has given you under the sun, all the days of your vanity, for that is your portion in this life and in, labor, in the labor which you take under the sun. Whatsoever you, your hand finds to do, do it with your might, for there is no work, device, or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you're going. So, Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, not necessarily to the swift. And this minister, by the way, finally, I think it was the last time he raced this individual, won the race because he had not been able to run. The guy, the guy that always beat him had not been able to run because he was sick. And so he won first place. Time and chance happened to the guy that always beat him, and the, the, the race wasn't to the swiftest. <clears throat> the race was to the sec went to the second swiftest, and the same happens in... Contests of strength. I'm just keeping it, not necessarily restricting it to um, things of this nature, but expressing it in things of this nature. Nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. You see all of the different varieties he put this into. He just starts off talking about those who run fast and those who are strong and how they normally would be winners, but they're not always because time and chance, it says here, <clears throat> to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happens to them all. <clears throat> 